occasionally we find ourselves with a set of data that has a value that stands out from the others. Perhaps we have seen several pieces of data that cluster together, but there's one that seems to be apart from the rest. That looks suspicious. What's going on? Did something bias that particular value? Should we include it or should we throw it out? How do we decide? The best support for rejecting a questionable measurement would be to look to your lab notebook. See if you made any notes during the experiment. Perhaps you thought that the color was different for that particular titration and the endpoint might be a little off. Or maybe you spilled something or, or ran out of buffer and this one didn't get the five milliliters, only got three milliliters. The point is that you took notes as you worked and recorded any variation that might make a difference. If you have a note associated with this questionable value, then you can honestly reject it. We would call it an outlier. If you don't have any note of caution about that suspicious value, then we need to consider a statistical argument. We know that at least some of the time, data does fall a distance from the center of the curve. So let's suppose this represents a distance that's two standard deviations from the center of the curve, two standard deviation units in the negative direction. Then 5% of the time we know by just chance, data will occur at these two regions here. We might decide to throw out a questionable value if we can show that there is less than 5% chance that it is a good value. If we know the population average, as well as the standard deviation, we could calculate a z-value as the difference between the questionable value and the population average, and divide by sigma. That would give us a z-value. We would know that that corresponds to an area. We could look that up in a table. And we would know then the area that corresponds to this here. And we know that this area is 0.5 minus the red area. So if this z value correspond to some much smaller area, then we'd say there's less chance that that was due to random chance. And we could reject the suspicious value with at least 95% confidence that was the right thing to do. Of course, when we're working with a small data set, we don't really know what the population average or sigma is. All we have is the sample average. Couldn't we take the difference between the average and the questionable value and compare it to the sample standard deviation? Well, that ratio would be a, something similar to z, but we'll call it g, we'll associate that with an experimental value of g. For a particular probability level, g be a little bit bigger than z. Just what that value would be has been worked out for us some time ago by Frank Grubbs in a paper back in 1969. This paper is available to you online at the American Statistical Association. So what we're going to do is look at this experimental value of g and compare it to Grubbs's table. I've taken a portion of Grubbs's table for the 95% confidence level and reproduced it here. And you can see that it also depends upon the number of measurements or observations that we're making, something like a t distribution. Let's work a specific example and see how this is applied. So let's suppose we have some data for the weight percent of nickel found in samples of a stainless steel. And the data looks something like this. We see that they cluster together except for this particular point. This looks suspicious. Is this an outlier? Well, let's apply Grubbs tests. We're going to need to know the average value for the whole data set as it stands and the standard deviation for this group. And that's also percent nickel. So let's calculate the experimental value of g. So we take the average value and subtract from that the suspicious value of 4.90. Let's take the 
absolute value and divide by the standard deviation, 0.163, and we get 1.866. This data set has six members in it, so six observations corresponds to a table value of 1.82. And we see that's less than the experimental value. Therefore, we conclude that we can reject the 4.9 with at least 95% confidence that it was an outlier and doesn't belong to our data set. If we're going to throw that out, we need to calculate the new average. We find that it changes a little bit, but the standard deviation has changed quite a bit 